Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at what I keep in my 2 meter go bag. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, real quick before we get to today's content, I've got to give a shout out to Keith and Mark. They're my latest uh, patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, we'll leave a link down in the description below. Now, if you've been following the channel for quite some time, or maybe you've dug through some of my older content, you'll know that I did a video on this bag roughly a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. Uh, but it has uh, a few updates to it uh, that I thought was worth another video. So let's dive into it and see what I keep in the bag. Now, first of all, you'll notice the Yezu uh, FT65 radio. This one, is, uh, this one is new. It's an upgrade over the Baofeng that I was carrying in it. Uh, it's got a little bit of water protection, so it's water resistant. Not waterproof, but water resistant. Uh, it's got much better receive capabilities than the Baofeng had to it. So it's got a, a much better receiver, uh, front end receiver in it. So you can hear weaker signals uh, with this radio. So I've been running this for now about six months and I'm really digging this radio. Uh, it comes in at less than a hundred bucks. I think I paid like uh, $85 from this for uh, from HRO. It takes the same accessories uh, as far as antenna accessories uh, that the Baofeng had. So all the antennas that I had purchased for the Baofeng over the last uh, you know four or five years will fit right into the Yezu radio. So if you got a little uh, extra dollars laying around, instead of picking up that new Baofeng, I'd take a look at the Yezu FT65. No APRS built in, but we've got a solution for that, as you guys well know. All right, let's dig into the rest of the bag. All right, so right out of the gate, let's take a look at this uh, front compartment here. You will notice I added the uh, morale patch to it. If you guys are interested in a morale patch, they're actually on sale uh, till the end of this month uh, in our web store. So there's a link to those uh, down in the description. So right here, I keep three different types of USB cables. Uh, this one is USB-C. This one is USB to lightning, uh, the lightning port for the Apple devices. And then an older style, I believe this is micro USB, if I remember right, um, USB B. I, anyway, one of the older USB uh, type connectors. And the reason I keep these all three in here is uh, our primary communication device is still our cell phone. And if one of my friends jumps in the Jeep and has a dead cell phone, I've always got the right cable for their particular device. Uh, so handy to have all three types in there, just in case somebody needs a quick charge. On this side, you'll see a little case here that stores four AA batteries. I really don't have any need for AA batteries in this particular setup, but I just always like to have AA batteries in here. Maybe my flashlight's dead, whatever. You got four extra AA batteries. These are rechargeable, so uh, every few months we'll take these out, swap them with a fresher set, and uh, keep everything charged up, ready to go. In addition to that is a extra battery for the FT65. So if I'm out a little bit longer, one battery's not quite enough, I've got a spare. And then the last thing you'll see over here is paracord, uh, 550 cord. So we can use this uh, with an antenna inside the uh, main compartment here to hang the antenna in a tree, get a little bit more elevation out of it. All right, so let's dig into the main compartment here. Uh, first thing I'm going to pull out is just a uh, little uh, stock uh, rubber duck antenna that comes with a Baofeng. Since this will fit on the FT65, I kept it in there. Sometimes I just don't need that long antenna. Maybe I'm in uh, real close proximity with somebody else. Uh, and we're trying to communicate, I just don't need the extra uh, antenna length. And sometimes this is just a little handier uh, than that long antenna. So I like to keep it in there just in case. To go along with that, I keep a longer antenna. It's just kind of a backup. This is an old one that I've had. It's been beat to death. 
Uh, all the rubber coating has actually been pulled off the wire. I had to put a uh, piece of heat shrink tube up here to protect your eyes when using this one. But uh, if I lost my longer antenna or whatever, I do have this. Uh, there's usually a couple of HTs in my Jeep. Uh, my, uh, my FT65 and then something else, uh, depending on what day it is. The other one usually has the rubber duck antenna on it, so I can grab this and put a longer antenna on that one should the need arise. Next up, we've got a battery bank. Uh, I believe this one is 10,000, yeah, 10,000 milliamp hours or 37 watt hours. This one's capable of recharging the iPhones uh, roughly three times, maybe a little bit more. I believe uh, iPhones have 2,500 milliamp hour battery, if I remember right. So you might could get almost four charges. Uh, it does have dual output USBs. Both of them are 2.1 amps. Uh, and it's rechargeable by plugging up a USB cable here. So great little thing to have uh, in case your cell phone is going dead. You can grab this even if you've got to get out of the vehicle. Next up, we've got an old Android phone. Uh, now this one doesn't have any actual cell service on it, but it does have APRS Droid. So using APRS Droid on the phone and using the phone's GPS, we can use the MobiLink TNC. This is the cable right here on top to go to my Yezu uh, HT. But we can use the MobiLink and the phone together to feed the GPS information out of the phone and into the HT for a little portable APRS setup. So even though that radio doesn't have APRS built in, we can use these two devices here to add APRS to that FT65 radio. Uh, a lot of other things you can do with a MobiLink, so I'm really kind of digging this device. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. We've got other videos coming out using the MobiLink shortly. All right, something else that I like to keep in the bag is just a little adapter. So this can plug right into the top of the radio and then it gives me a SO239 on this side. Should I go uh, inside somewhere that I've got access to an antenna, uh, say on the roof, uh, but all they've got is PL259 connectors, I can adapt uh, or I can use this adapter to plug the coax into the HT uh, greatly increasing the efficiency of the HT because of the larger antenna. So always like to have one of those handy as well. Now, I'll try to remember or find a link to exactly where I picked up uh, this little mag mount antenna. I searched and searched for this guy and it was pretty tough to find. If I remember right, I got it out of France. Uh, but the cool thing about this, it is a mag mount. The adapter on it is SMA male, so we can take a antenna off of the uh, FT65 or a Baofeng and screw right into the top of this, and that gives us the capability of putting the mag mount outside the car uh, and get our antenna outside of the Faraday cage. We've got enough cable here to run back in through a window or something temporarily, and we've got the correct connector for either the Baofeng or the Yezu radio that I'm now using. So if I need to jump in a friend's car, they don't have a radio in there, I can grab this little kit and get that uh, antenna out of the, out, outside of the car up onto the roof and greatly uh, increase the efficiency of the radio using that antenna. And last but not least, we've got a roll-up J-Pole antenna. I believe I purchased this one from Nelson Antennas off of eBay. Uh, it's made out of twin lead. It is super small, super lightweight, uh, so it's easy to pack around. Uh, it does have the appropriate connector on it for, uh, for the HT that I'm using. So we could use the paracord that you saw earlier in the video to get this antenna up into a tree. Uh, so you get a little bit of gain out of the J-pole and then the added uh, elevation would give you a, a much better antenna to use with the HT than either the standard uh, rubber duck or even the, uh, 
longer antenna that I keep on the uh, HT regularly. Now, one note about these, I think they're only good for maybe 10 watts. Uh, double check me on that, but I think it's 10 watts. Uh, I know for a fact it won't handle 50 watts. I tried to run a net one night and accidentally left my rig on 50 watts. Uh, before the net was over, this had melted. So, not a good idea to run 50 watts through it, but I think uh, any HT will be fine with it, uh, including the, the newer HTs that'll put out uh, eight or nine watts. So, great little lightweight antenna to really improve uh, your setup. Guys, before you head off, be sure to click the thumbs up and go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already and clicking the bell right beside that subscribe button will notify you of future videos when they release. So that's a quick look at all of the gear that I keep in the two meter bag. Uh, it's good, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, recharging cell phones. Uh, if I've got to jump out of my vehicle, this is where this little kit stays, is in my, in my Jeep Wrangler. But if I've got to jump out of it, get into somebody else's car, they don't have uh, a radio, I can grab this kit and have a, a fairly efficient little radio with me. Uh, well, as, about as efficient as you can get in this little bitty bag. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.